Hey everybody, this is Matt from Direwolf Digital coming to you today with a first look at Munchkin Digital, which will be coming to Steam Early Access on December 1st, uh, and then otherwise on iOS and Android phones and tablets, in full cross-platform play as we get ready for full release over the next couple of months. Today we're going to be taking a first look at the tutorial and learning how to play Munchkin and kind of getting a sense of what makes it tick and getting under the hood. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into the basic introduction tutorial. We've got to start somewhere. Welcome to the monster slaying, treasure stealing, backstabbing world of Munchkin. Hold on to your seat. It's time to dive into the dungeon. Let's do it. We're going to begin as a level one adventurer with no class. Some of us will end that way. Our goal is to gear up, defeat monsters, and reach level 10 before another player gets there before us. This is us down here. The game plays out over a series of rounds that are driven by cards. At the start of the game, we'll get a hand of cards to choose from each of the treasure in the door decks. Four cards from each deck. Then we're going to look at our hand and see if we have any class, uh, like our job, or race, what kind of creature we are, or item, like the weapons or armor or tools that we have to explore the dungeon. Let's see what we have here that we can start the game with. Ah, the slimy armor. Alright, so if you look, uh, the slimy armor will give us a plus one bonus to our strength, which is what we're going to need if we're going to fight any monsters down here. So we're going to go ahead and equip that, and you can see our strength down here went from one to two. Strength is determined by your gear plus your level, so we're only level one right now, but uh, hopefully that'll be get get, uh, get going as we do some adventuring. The Buckler of Swashing is going to give us two more strength, and it's a one-handed item. Uh, this is equipment, so we have to equip it ahead of time. We can't play it in combat. You can wear one foot gear, one armor, and a head gear, and you can only have one item in each hand or a two-handed item. Uh, there's also big items, which uh, we don't have any of right now. So... We're up first, we're gonna, uh, we can play cards. It looks like we don't really have anything to play before we kick in the door. So let's get started. Harpies, oh no. A monster appears. To defeat the harpies, we, our strength must be greater than its level. We can see its level is four. Right now, our strength is four. If we lose, there's gonna be some bad stuff that happens because of their music. We, however, can change our class into a warrior. And now, the warrior, uh-oh, Gary came in over the top here, the Shrieking Geek. Before combat ends, uh, your opponents can play cards to modify things that are happening. The Cotion of Pond Fusion uh, as increases the Harpy's strength. So now we're in, yeah, we're in rough shape here. Thanks, Gary. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do in response. We have a freezing explosive potion. We're going to go ahead and use that potion ourselves. And we're going to be tough enough to defeat the harpies and claim the two treasures that they were guarding. This also increases our level up to level two. But we have more than oh we have more than five cards in hand, so we have to uh, give cards to a low-level opponent. But we can play cards to avoid that, like the pointy hat of power. We're gonna just carry in our hands rather than uh, leave in our, or I guess uh, carry on us rather than leave in our hand as players. Now it's Gary's turn. Spiky knees. Gotta watch out for those. Let's kick open the door and see what we find. Uh-oh. A curse. So that's gonna take our armor away, and it's gonna reduce our strength. The slimy armor. You know, it's a mixed blessing, really. We're gonna lose our slimy armor for now. 
And, uh, yeah, you know what, Gary? What goes around comes around. We're going to play the Lose a Big Item Curse on Gary. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed your time at the Chainsaw. We don't have it. Oh, we do have monster cards in our hand. Yeah, we can go looking for trouble. What that means, you can play a monster card from your hand when you don't find one in the dungeon. And then uh, fight it as normal. The crabs that you can't outrun. But they can't outrun us either. So we won. We go up to level three. We got some boots. Plus two to run away. Why would you run away? We're going to play Enraged on the Pitbull and uh, see how Gary feels about that. One of the things about Munchkin is uh, it's a game about punishing and betraying your friends at basically every turn, uh, trying to get rich along the way. But, uh, you know, right now we're going through the tutorials. So we're playing against the AI, so it's not as personal as it will be when uh, you can do it live in a multiplayer game. Ooh. Now the tutor's waiting into battle. First player to level five wins. Okay, we're going to play a shortened tutorial game to uh, to wrap up the first tutorial here. So right now we're sitting pretty well. We're at level three compared to level one for our opponents, but that can change really fast. Pretty balloons. It's a one-time item that can cause a pretty big swing in combat. Let's see what we find. Oh, I probably... Yeah. What do we have here? Oh, items. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh-oh. We're going to call for help. When we ask for help, we see, is anybody willing to come fight this monster with us? We can choose who we're willing to accept help from, but, you know, we're, right now, let's not discriminate. We'll take help from anybody who will get it. Uh, who's willing to give it to us. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, nothing in life is free. To get help, we have to offer a bribe. We can share the treasure, we can give cards from our inventory, or we can say, you know what, no, you're going to help us up the goodness of your hearts. In this case, we have to make an offer. So we're going to offer to share, share the treasure in a random split. There's two treasures total. We can offer one to give away. So let's see if anybody's willing to come help us for one treasure. Typical. Nope, no one's going to help us. Okay. It would be good if I had my boots of running really fast equipped here, but that's why you have to equip items outside of combat. Uh, so we're going to run away. Fortunately, we succeed. We're going to learn a valuable lesson here and uh, equip some of our stuff that we have here. The Cloak of Obscurity and the Invisibility Potion are both going to go into our inventory uh, letting us have access to them when we do find a monster. A large, angry chicken. Uh, we don't have anything to do to jump in here, I don't think. Different uh, class and cards and curses and things like that will come into play. This is our. You can look at your inventory at any time to get a sense of just how much great loot you're carrying. We are a warrior. Oh, the pretty balloons are going to lift the tutor to victory over the Amazon. So now uh, our, our lead, uh, after a, uh, a somewhat questionably played last turn, our lead in this tutorial game is uh, not looking as good as it once was. All right, let's get it together. Pukachu. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We don't have any cards that we can discard. Carried. Our invisibility potion is not going to get us there. All right, we can try to call for help again. Let's, uh... You know what? We're actually going to make a better offer. We're going to let them pick from the treasure first. Ah, they're both willing to help. In this case, let's take help from the tutor. Because uh, Gary's a level ahead of us already, so we don't need him to get any stronger here. Or he's a level ahead of the tutor, rather. So with the help of the tutor, uh, at a price, we have defeated the monster. We get the level, so we're now level four. And then when it's time to split the treasure, 
uh, our opponent is going to get to pick first what they want. So they're leaving us with a huge rock. Uh, what does this do? So the Buckler of Swashing is two strength. The big rock is three strength. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's trade it out. So we've got a big rock now. You can see our inventory is down here, and our strength is now seven. So we just need one more level to win this tutorial game, but normally in a full game you'd go to ten. Uh-oh, the Lame Goblin. An easy win for Gary. So some items, like you might have seen, the Singing and Dancing Sword is not usable by the Thief. Some items are class or uh, race restricted. Some uh, items give you bonuses if you're a certain uh, class or race combination. All right, here we go. See if we can bring it home. A drooling slime. This is only level one. This should be easy, unless one of our opponents does something truly horrific to us, which they don't. Okay, we got there. We got there. It was a little rocky going at the beginning, but uh, eventually we took it down. So that's the first uh, tutorial game that shows you the basics of how to play, how combat works, how gearing up and using items works. Uh, so let's uh, dive into this tutorial too. More stuff. I mean, there's probably more stuff in this game, right? I would think. Let's find out what it is. So again, we're drawing four cards from each deck. Oh look, we get to be a thief. So a thief class has an ability called backstabbing, where you can discard a card to give another player minus two in combat. Uh, and the theft ability, you can discard a card to try to steal a small item from another player. But that's uh, pretty risky, because if you fail, you're going to lose a level. But we're going to be a thief. <laughs> Did you go through the deck and find the card with the most text to read? Yeah. What kind of tutorial is this? Who made this? All right. We drew a bunch of useless items. Like, we are a thief. The shield of ubiquity is usable by warrior only. But they're at least worth some gold. You can see up here that the shield is worth 600 gold. Uh, during your turn when you're not in combat, you can go down here to your inventory and try to sell some things. The stepladder. I've always loved the stepladder, but unfortunately, you need to be a halfling uh, in order to use it. So the shield of ubiquity... We're going to drag over here. And the stepladder over here. And once you get to a thousand gold, that's the cost to level up. Uh, so just like real life, you can buy your way to success in the world. And we are going to do that. Oh, the Mace of Sharpness. Oh, we're asking for a trade. Uh, we're going to equip the mace, or carry the mace, and then when we can go up here, we can offer to trade it to the tutor. So we're going to give the mace of sharpness and get the dagger of treachery. What a perfect item for a cunning thief such as us. It's almost like this was determined ahead of time. So now we've got our dagger, and right now on our first turn, just as we're gearing up, we're already strength five between selling our uh, gear that we couldn't use, trading away the mace for the dagger, which gives us plus three, but is only a thief. So we are in good shape. But if you look at Gary and the tutor, they're also at strength five and six. So everybody is uh, getting out to a pretty fast start here. Uh-oh, the net troll. Nobody likes a net troll. But we, fortunately, can ask for help. We did some of this in the first tutorial game. Uh, we were ahead of the curve. And by giving away a random treasure to the tutor, he agrees to come help us. Again, this is a decision that players will make in-game, and the AI will do the same thing in non-tutorial games. They don't have to help you, but if you make a compelling enough offer, uh, it can be in their interests. The price is right. So the gear gets split. We have a thousand gold pieces. Look at this. Uh, we could make one of our opponents go up a level. 
which does actually have some weird edge case utility, but for now, uh, we're just going to be greedy and take it ourselves. So right now, we are sitting pretty at level 4, 7 strength. Let's see what Gary is up to. So here you see a, uh, a monster that actually has a bonus against warriors, so it's more difficult for certain classes to fight than others. And you know what? Gary is looking like he's going to win this thing, but we, the backstabbing thieves that we are, uh, we can discard a card. So uh, it wants us to discard the Bullrog. That's fine. Level 18. We're not going to fight that anytime soon. However, we are going to use the power of the Bullrog to put Gary in a bind. Now his strength is only 13, and he is on track to lose this combat. So it gives you, the, the thief ability gives you a lot of flexibility in how you play the cards from your hand. Uh, because it gives, you know, it turns every card in your hand into a potential minus two uh, for an opponent, which can, in close combats, make the difference. So Gary, oh, it looks like Gary is not going to make it. When a player dies, they lose all of their stuff, but they keep their race class and level. Uh, they'll come back at the start of the next game, but they can't receive any cards via charity. And, uh, yeah, there you go. And we get to loot the body. That flaming armor looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take that. All right, we're going to go to level 10, and the tutor is in it to win it. Uh, let's finish this game. May the best adventurer win. All right, well, he's going to regret saying that in a couple of minutes here. Let's see what we can do. The floating nose. Should we help... Three random treasures for helping defeat the Floating Nose. I mean, can't argue with that. So we answered the call. We could have left uh, the, our opponent there to, to kind of twist in the wind of the Floating Nose, but for three treasures, I feel like, you know, we might as well be greedy, right? That's what we came here for. All right, the Wand of Dowsing, but look at this. Go through discards, find any card you want. I mean, that's pretty exciting. Uh, the Instant Wall. The Cloak of Obscurity. I mean, we are a thief. Ooh, that's going to be good. Look at that. Pushes us up to 11. Uh, and we just drew those cards, so we were able to equip them immediately. And now that it's our turn, we can equip other things uh, as necessary. We do also have this monster card in our hand in case we need to go looking for trouble. And we've got the baby. Haven't really ever wanted to fight a baby. The potted plant. All right. I think we can uh, safely... I think we can feel pretty good about where this combat is heading without asking for help or doing anything too dramatic. Take care of the potted plant and go up to level 5. Sure. It is our turn, so let's take a look in our inventory, because we just got a bunch of items here. So maybe we can get to a, a thousand gold worth of stuff we don't need. So uh, I would say, let's see, that's 300, 600. I mean, the Wand of Dowsing is just a level by itself, and that's pretty, that's pretty good. I think... That's fine. So we're going to go. It's a powerful item, but leveling up is also a very good thing. It is, in fact, how you win the game. Uh, we don't have any more actions we're going to take, so we're just going to pass. Gary is in rough shape here. Uh-oh. She's greater of peace. I mean, that's going to be pretty good for the tutor. Here we go. The leprechaun. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that. I don't think we can get the monster there where the leprechaun would be able to take down the tutor, so you just have to let it happen.
Oh, Super Munchkin. So now you can have two. The tutor can have two class cards at once because that's what being a Super Munchkin means. Lose foot gear. I don't think we had foot gear. Uh, so now we can go looking for trouble and draw a card from the door deck. Or, or rather, we can go looking for trouble and play a monster from our hand. Or loot the room and draw a card from the door deck. We have this mall rat uh, in our hand. So we're going to look for trouble. And we're going to fight the mall rat because we are on the leveling up quickly plan. So again, we're level 15. No problem. Or strength 15. No problem taking down a level 1 monster. And then we hit level 7. So we got a sleep potion. So let's see. Do we have a thousand gold worth of stuff? Uh, uh, six. Yeah, look at that. I think we can sell all this stuff. Sell all our non-equipped items. I like to hang on to equipped items. Uh, the flask of blue. The nasty tasting sports drink. And look at that. And now we are level eight. Well on our way. What's the tutor going to find? He's equipping the Sneaky Bastard Sword, the Cheese Grater of Peace, just loaded for bear. Cheat! The tutor is just cheating on us over here. You can look up in the action log up here to see uh, what other stuff is happening in case you missed something. But in this case, the Bigfoot has arrived. You can look at discard piles. The uh, wand of the uh, Dowsing Wand would have been helpful uh, if we wanted to dig through the discard piles. That's part of how you would do that. Lose armor. I could have sold that armor. That's hardly fair. So now we don't have a monster card in our hand, so we can't go looking for trouble. We could try to steal something from one of our opponents. Uh, that seems pretty risky. We don't want to lose a level at this point in the game. Ooh, Mr. Bones. That's great, because Mr. Bones as a low-level monster will be something that we can pretty reliably defeat, uh, even if we have to go looking for trouble because we don't find a monster. The Platycore. Discard your whole hand or lose two levels. Uh, we could jump in and help him here, but, uh, or, or play a card, rather, but we're not going to turn a 17-strength wizard or 17-strength cleric into something that the Platycore can handle. Uh, okay. So here, we actually, I think, have an opportunity where if we sell our dagger and our cloak, yeah, we're going to sell all the items in our hand. Uh, so we're, we're unequipped, naked as the day we were born. We're going to hit level 9, and if we don't hit a monster, we can play Mr. Bones, and that should give us the win. Lose a small item path. Joke's on you, dungeon. We just sold all our small items. And we're going to go look for trouble. We're going to play Mr. Bones. And now, as long as none of our opponents do anything to us... Uh, we even have this baby card. You know what? We're going to turn this skeleton into a skeletal baby, which is pretty horrible to think about, but should uh, increase our odds of victory. So the po the Cotion upon Fusion. Oh, the Ancient. No! No! Uh, brutal. 
Okay, well, our uh, our enemies our enemies have successfully defeated us. They pumped the uh, the baby skeleton to 12 strength, so our cunning plan to win the game right there was thwarted. And we are now in kind of rough shape. Because the tutor is sitting at level 7, so we, we went for it. We went for it. Now we're actually kind of far behind. It feels like in true Munchkin spirit, sometimes you gotta, you know, you, you get get rich or die trying. I don't know why we, I don't know who made the AI mean. Doesn't seem hardly fair. All right, now the tutors at level nine. Yeah, I think they got us. They they dogpiled on us there. Unless something pretty unreasonable happens here. Well, we're gonna fight the gelatinous octahedron. So we're gonna hit level nine. We still got a chance. We get a chance if the rat on a stick. Uh, I guess we'll equip it. It's possible that the tutor will miss on fighting a monster and not have one in his hand to go looking for trouble. Uh, the gazebo is just gonna do terrible things to Gary. Yeah. Uh, this could be bad. This could be the game. Oh, he found a halfling. Does he have a monster in his hand to go looking for trouble? He does. Yep. But, look at that. I think that was Gary came in big there. Gary played out to lunch to send the monster on a break. So the tutor did not get to defeat the monster. Would have won the game, but again, Gary came in. Uh, chicken on your head. It's never good. We're gonna loot the room. A dwarf. I don't think we currently have a race. Yeah. So we're gonna. You can see your class and your race cards down here in the corner. So we are now a dwarf. We can hold. We can carry up to six cards. It's not likely to be a problem in this game given the way things are going. So now, let's see, is the is tutor going to get here this time, or is Gary going to... We're just living on a prayer here. Duck of Doom? Okay, okay. Lose two levels. You should know better than to pick up a duck in a dungeon. Everybody knows that. All right, well... Large angry chicken. Okay, okay, this could be it. This could be it. Uh, I don't think we have any tricks. We do not have any tricks. All right, so all we gotta do is fight. And we get there. Look at that. Sometimes it's just that easy. It's a little uh, twists and turns, betrayals, swindles. But uh, eventually we came out on top and defeated the second tutorial. So, uh, so this is Munchkin. Uh, Munchkin Digital is going to be out in Steam Early Access on December 1st. We're very excited. We'll have some more looks at some of the other features uh, going into it over the next couple of weeks. But this is uh, intended to be a, a first look at the game to give you a sense of how it plays out, how it feels, uh, and what the rules are, basically, the, the how to play of Munchkin. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll be joining us for Steam Early Access on December 1st, because we're really looking forward to hearing from players, from fans of the game, uh, about where things are at, what's making the digital implementation of Munchkin tick, and where it's going from here. So uh, thanks for joining us. We'll have more for you soon. But for now, this is Munchkin Digital. Don't forget to wishlist it on Steam, and we will see you soon. <laughs>